All right, guys, after a long hiatus, we're finally back. There's a lot that's happened. I haven't got a chance to update you guys on X or on YouTube yet. I will update you soon, but we're back at it, and we are going to do a head-to-head -head comparison of the latest version of public FSD for both Hardware 3 and Hardware 4, just to compare them back-to-back -back and side-by-side. -side. Now that we have some clarity on the fate of Hardware 3, uh, and what they're attempting to do uh, to the point where they can get it as close as possible to uh, Hardware 4, specifically in regards to the finalized product of unsupervised full self-driving, or else they'll have to upgrade all the cars for free. Um, we just want to compare and contrast the two. Obviously, they're going to be making some compromises to the code and, and their practices to be able to make it work on Hardware 3 right now for full self-driving unsupervised. Unsuper uh, so we're going to see how they compare. A lot of people have complaints. A lot of people have issues. A lot of people have different versions, but we're going to compare and contrast. So we're going to do our quick test path right now. We've got the latest one, 12.5.4.2, and then we'll do the same exact run on Hardware 4 to see how it compares, the smoothness, um, the ease in which it performs certain maneuvers, the surety of the, the yoke, being able to make sure it's still and solid and not twitching and, and jerking, things like that. Okay, so we're going to do a quick test. We'll do highway as well, but I'll do that in a separate video. And that's why I'll update you guys on the latest state of things in the black Tesla world. All right, so let's get it started right now. Right from the road, uh, once this car passes. Try to engage from the shoulder in five, four, three, two, one. Engage, turn signal on. Still needs a little bit of a boost and we'll give it. A little bit of accelerator press, maybe too many accelerator presses for my taste. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll do the exact same thing with Hardware 4 to see. Coming up on turn one, just really trying to see the differences and the nuance here. Both cars are moderately dirty, not the cleanest cars they can be. Cameras are clear, sun is setting in a weird angle. It's all clear to go, but the sun glare is really serious right now. Does a good job going, and it goes. So good job on turn one. Sun glare this time of year is particularly interesting. So to have cameras that are a little bit dirty can be a big problem. Um, we're gonna see how that impacts the drive going forward. Turn two coming up, Let's see what it does. Good mile an hour, does it stay on the shoulder? Slows down nicely. Nice turn, nice mile an hour, good job. Good job on turn two, nice and smooth. Puts on a turn signal on this winding road again, which is not the greatest thing. Doesn't seem to do that in hardware four, but we'll test it out again, build for build. Now that we're not only, we have a oh, big pothole. Oh, that was bad. No pothole avoidance. If it doesn't in the hardware four car, I'll have to take over on that one just because that's a pretty big one and that's thinner tires on the hardware four car. Good job on the winding road so far. Again, minus the pothole, but it is what it is. Unprotected left, sun setting, lots of sun glare. Let's see what happens. Pedestrian is there, waits for the pedestrian nicely. She, she does a good job getting over and we go. All clear to go. Nice and smooth. Great job. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. We want it to be easy. We want it to be uneventful. But more importantly, we want it to be predictable what FSD does. Okay, so with this new version, we also have the, uh, I guess, uh, several year b bug fix for the visualization. Apparently, there was a bug that has persisted for years. I don't know how someone didn't find it but it persisted for years that made this visualization very laggy. Uh, if you can equate it to frame rates, I would say it was operating at akin to 24 to 30 FPS in terms of the speed and latency. And now it's been updated to operate more akin to 60 FPS. So smoother, more uh, realistic looking uh, animations. But the important thing is the latency. The difference between what you see on the screen versus what you see in the real world and how it correlates. 
That's the key here, and that's what's been greatly improved. It's not perfect. It's not completely one-to-one -one where a car passes or a person passes and exactly where they are is exactly where they are on the screen, but it's much improved to the point where now it's getting very close to being a truer representation. Look at that car pass. Look where it is on there. A truer representation of where things are around you at the time that they are around you. It's always been an issue uh, with the visualizations that it wasn't quite um, 100 percent match now obviously you're driving you're looking at the road you don't need to look at the visualization whether it's here or on this on the big screen whatever the case may be you don't need to look at it but if you do look at it you at least know that it's a true representation of spatially of where things are and when they're there so that's always a good thing and it also just looks cool it looks much cooler much more uh, cleaner and futuristic i've seen some of the newer cars the uh what is it the lotus electra their UI powered by some high powered GPU uh, is very smooth and very crisp. This puts it on that level, high levels of crispness and smoothness with the animations. Definitely happy to see that. Okay, so this gets pretty congested. People tend to bias towards the left when they wanna make a left turn or bias towards the right when they want to make a right turn. So there really is no real definition here. There's no line here to delineate one versus the other. So it's good to see the car being able to, to follow what people do and sort of make its way through here without a big deal, without blocking anyone. So that's great. I got a lot to talk to you guys about, uh, about the state of things. Things, lots of things have changed, uh, but it's good to see, you know, the things that have unfolded in terms of the We Robot event, Robo Taxi, getting clarity. And I think the biggest thing we we get um, of all the things that have happened is lots of clarity. It seems like uh, Elon has kind of deferred to Tesla AI, the Tesla AI team to uh, give updates on FSD while he goes and do, does other things, which is interesting, but also good because they're very transparent uh, right now. They're giving us roadmaps. They give us exactly what, what they're gonna deliver and when, and in most cases, they're gonna hit it. And if it needs to take them a little longer, that's fine, but at least we got good vi uh, good fidelity, good visibility into what's coming up and when, which is really, really great to see Tesla do after so long not being able to really give any clear insight other than, you know, cryptic tweets or responsive tweets to certain things that are really vague. Good to see a nice, good, detailed um, plan. Coming up on our final turn here, a little close to the curve, but not bad. Very precise, very good. Excellent job. Excellent job. Construction situation here has to kind of squeeze in here, slows down nicely for this car. Is it going to turn or is it going to try to pull over? Let's see what it does. Looks like it's going to turn. Navigation ending. And it's very hesitantly making a turn here. Now someone's hot on our heels here. So I'm going to just pull over and take over. Sorry, guy. I'm pull over and take over here. So that was great. So that was Hardware 3. Um, I think that was pretty, pretty solid of a drive. Uh, I'm just going to plain out say that I think it was a, a, a low levels of Uber Black uh, in that regard, just because uh, that last turn was a little bit shaky. And again, it was extra credit, but it was still kind of shaky. And a little bit of hesitancy in certain areas where it could have been a little bit more confident. But otherwise, confidence was good. Decision making was good. Letting the pedestrian go as opposed to trying to rush and cut her off. Uh, and then taking your time on the unprotected left. Right. Safety was good. It felt super safe. Didn't feel like there was, I was having any issues other than obviously the pothole, with, which is a non-factor because it's not even in the equation right now. Right. And then all comfort was very good overall. So pretty good on hardware three. 12.5.4.2 on our regression test path, easy path. Now let's go ahead and get the hardware four car do the exact same path and see the differences if there are any. Stay tuned. All right, guys, hardware four car now here, 12.5.4.2. And we're gonna take it on a test path, on a regression test path to see how it compares. I'll start from the shoulder here. Activate, still same issue, accelerator, press, and engages. So still same issue, consistent between both builds, or both sets of hardware, I should say, same build. 
Coming up to our first turn. Good stop. Should be all clear. Good same sun glare. Car coming. Slows down nicely for it. And then proceeds. A little closer, so we hit this, the uh, little pothole there. It's hit or miss. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Took it better in Hardware 3 in that one uh, because it actually missed it. It took a wider turn versus taking a, a closer turn. So that's noticeable. Both passed it. First turn is good. Let's see what happens in the second turn and subsequent turns. Slows down nicely. 10 mile an hour was Hardware 3. Doesn't get into the shoulder. A little bit more methodical here. Still does it, but a little bit more methodical. Kind of gave that person coming up to the light a little bit more respect. Or caution. I don't know what that was. No turn signal here on the winding road, which is great hardware for. This big pothole, I will take over if it's not in the right trajectory. This car's pushing us, so we miss it. Good job. Collision warning detection for the pedestrian. I'm not sure that might be a little bit of a bug as well. But overall, nice and smooth. Good job through the winding road and excellent job for missing the pothole on this one. Unprotected left, a little bit busier now, now that the time is getting a little bit later. Two cars coming to the left, one car coming from the right, can shoot the gap. Up, oh, kind of hesitates. Is it gonna go for it? It's not gonna go for it, so a little bit of uh, overzealousness. I think it could have made it, it thought otherwise, and now it's gonna go for it. So completed, but a little bit different, different scenarios. Again, repeatability, predictability, same exact course, same exact time of day, maybe slightly more congested in terms of traffic. It sees this car pulling out, so it's kind of going slowly. Good job, then proceeds. But we need a little bit more predictability there. Obviously, circumstances are always gonna be different when you're driving, even if it's the same, almost the same exact circumstances. The people coming, when they're coming, the timing, the speed of them driving is always gonna be different but there needs to be a baseline of consistency. It should know ahead of time, hey, I'm not gonna, this car's moving at, moving towards me at this speed, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna attempt. Instead, it's decided to attempt, slow down abruptly, and then kind of be a little bit out there in the lane. So not the greatest experience being in the car, a little bit of a ding there for Hardware 4 on that one. Again, Hardware 3 didn't have that issue, so it just kind of breezed right through. The graphics are uh, very much similar. Now they're on par with one another. Uh, it seemed as though before uh, there was a little bit of a, a discrepancy between the speed or latency, even with uh, older cars. Now it's kind of being a little bit undecisive, trying to decide if it wants to go around this car. Now it's too close to do so. So it's just gonna wait, which is a safer course of action, which is great, great to see. But again, the, the key here with the visuals is that it's still super smooth. Identical. I'm not really noticing a frame rate difference now between uh, the Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 cars in that regard. So it looks almost exactly the same. I can't really tell a difference if there is one. People are there moving very fluidly, with great fluidity, I should say. More than ever before. So I'm just flummoxed. I use the word flummox, that this was a bug that was never addressed. Needs to go straight. It's kind of lingering in this in the middle of the lane, which is not the greatest thing to do. It should still try to get over in the correct lane so it doesn't look like it's driving straight in the turning lane. Little little hesitation here. So it kind of didn't know what that car wanted to do and was a little bit hesitant. Again, not the same case for the Hardware 3 car. So again, it goes right through this, prop, this uh, path, no problem. So different circumstances creating different issues. What I'm noticing now is a, an abundance of over caution with Hardware 4 here. And Hardware 4 is supposed to be able to take advantage of more parameters. So I'm curious to know why there is an abundance of caution here that wasn't there on Hardware 3. 
because if I'm just a lay person in the car driving up until this point or riding in the car up until this point, the hardware three experience seemed to be a lot smoother than the hardware four so far, just based on, you know, the experience in the car. Obviously circumstances are different. up to the final turn, right turn here. Slowly gonna make this turn. Pedestrian might walk, it's gonna try to make the turn on red, which it can do, um, but I need it to go further out so it doesn't hit this curve. That's what I need it to do. Now it's the green light and the pedestrian's gonna walk. It sees it despite the glare and uh, proceeds. Come on, course correct, good job. Good job. It course corrected. Had to course correct and adjust. I noticed that a lot as well uh, with the course correction of the wheel tur making turns where it kind of sets a path, then uh, abandons course and readjusts so as to not hit the curb, which I can appreciate. But I'm just trying to figure out how do we do that? How do we get it right the first time? How does Tesla make a turn like this and not have to readjust and just do it? Okay. All right, it wants to pull into the lot. I'm sure that hardware four was going to pull into the lot as well had I given it the chance, but someone was hot on our heels, so we had to cut that short. All right, so with that said, here we are for hardware four. So same exact path, different circumstances, which is real life. Uh, sun was still there. The glare was still there. But um, I think overall, again, it was confident uh, in its abilities. So the confidence levels that, that exuded were based on its abilities, meaning, hey, I want, I could take this turn, but you know what? I'm going to decide not to take this turn, this unprotected left, and I'm going to wait for a clear path. That's a level of confidence. So I like that. Um, safety wise, I didn't feel unsafe. It missed the pothole, which is great, but being out there for that unprotected left, jumping out there like it was going to go was unsettling. So a little bit of a ding there in terms of safety. In terms of decision making, I think it made the right decisions. It could have went, could have went very aggressively and made that unprotected left no problem. It decided to stay. I'm okay with that too, but just make the decision ahead of time. Don't go mid flight, like uh, accelerate, then stop and say, wait, I'm not going to make it. You should know based on the speed of the car. And we know the Tesla's can, the, the, the FSD computer is seeing the speed of every object going towards and it calculates the trajectory. So it knows that, but it should have been done better planning that, uh, that maneuver. So that, that's where I think it fell back a little bit. But otherwise, yeah, decision making beyond that was pretty good. Again, taking a safer course of action, taking turns a little bit more methodically than before. So I think overall, I don't know what this guy's doing. Overall, um, it's pretty good. But I felt like as an ex from, from an overall experience, I want to give this, again, low levels of Uber Black. But I want to give the edge, slight edge to Hardware 3 on this regression test path under these circumstances. I felt a little bit more comfortable in that one because it wasn't making those mistakes or wasn't making those uh, didn't have the same issues or same circumstances to deal with so i couldn't compare 100 percent apples to apples with well, the same path nonetheless and more or less the same level of traffic a little bit more for hardware 4. let me know what you guys thought uh between the difference between hardware 4 and hardware 3 on this regression test path i'm going to do highway end to end now that everything's end to end i want to be able to test highway for both of these see what the difference is Try the earlier part of the day as well. Sun's more overhead and see if sun is not a factor. See if that plays a, plays a role in it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll also break down what all is going on. <laughs> Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.